Hey there, I'm going to try to continue in uh, Ephesians now. Um, I thought the intro was pretty interesting. Uh, <laughs> please comment on these so I know you guys are tracking. Uh, the fellowship on the comments sometimes inspires the direction of the messages. Um, okay, so we talked about how Ephesians is our Bethel. It's our vision of the same thing is, is throughout the whole Bible. God has a story that's unfolding about a building he's making. Um, not a building made with hands, but living stones, right? We are living stones for God's household, which is ultimately the New Jerusalem. And even in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, uh, there was a river, there was the tree of life, there was gold, uh, onyx, which is precious stones, and bdellium, which is actually a type of pearl, all mentioned about uh, in, in the account of the garden in terms of what materials were there. So at the end of the Bible, you see the New Jerusalem, which is a golden city with pearl gates with a wall made up of transformed precious stones. Uh, and the river of the water of life is it is the content of the city as well as the tree of life, which is alongside the water of life. It's a vine tree. Um, now, these are symbols all pointing to Christ. I mean, yes, in Genesis, it was physically there, but it was a picture indicating that God's intention is man in his image, with his likeness, expressing God in a way that results in a building, a building work. And that building consummates in the New Jerusalem, which is the sum total, actually, of all the positive themes in Scripture. Um, and I don't have time to get into all that, but all along the uh, vision of the household of God, vision of God's building, is what governed God's people. Uh, Abraham sought a city whose builder and maker is God. And we saw how Bethel, uh, or J Jacob, had a vision of Bethel, right? Which is uh, the heavenly ladder, which is Christ himself, who is the tabernacle of God, who joins heaven and earth in his own flesh. Um, God and man are brought together in Christ. And Jacob had a vision of that and set a rock there at that place and called it Bethel, the house of God. And that represents Christ as the cornerstone of God's building. But then there's the many precious stones who are actually all the believers eventually redeemed and glorified who become God's expression, remade in his image, brought into Christ, uh, brought into God himself, and God is brought into them, and they become the habitation of God in spirit. And this is the new city, Jerusalem. Uh, Moses had the vision, the blueprint of the tabernacle, right? He received the law, but he also received the blueprint for the tabernacle, which is a picture of what he saw in heaven, which is actually, it's a picture of Christ who is the tabernacle of God among men. He's, a, he's God dwelling in man. And then uh, David says, zeal for his house consumed him. And you know, David we know is a big sinner, and the Bible says that he was a man after God's heart. And a lot of people think that means because he repented of his sin and he felt so bad when he sinned. No, what David was after was the habitation of God. And he said, I'm not going to rest until I build you a house. And God said, no, you're a bloody man and you're not going to build my house. Uh, a seed who's going to come after you is going to build my house. But he did give him the blueprint. And ultimately, the seed that comes after him that builds the house is Christ. Um, and, and when you look at the exchange between Nathan the prophet and David about the house of God, that was when uh, God made a covenant with 
David's seed, which is Christ, which we call the Davidic covenant, which guaranteed that he would be the son of God, that God would be his father, that he would have an everlasting kingdom, that he would sit on David's throne forever, uh, that God's mercies would not depart from him, and that he would uh, build the house of God. And ultimately, that's Christ, uh, the king who lives forever, who will inherit the Davidic throne. Uh, and he is building the house of God. He's the cornerstone of the house of God. And in him, we're being built together to be a habitation of God in spirit. It all gets transferred over into spiritual reality once the New Testament occurs, right? So then Solomon actually built the temple that David gave him the blueprints for, which was an enlargement of the tabernacle that God gave Moses the blueprints for, all a picture of Christ and the church. Christ is the tabernacle, but we're the temple, and we'll see that in Ephesians. Um, and then, so, so we had all the pictures, and the whole story of the Old Testament is about the temple and whether they were in the land and maintaining the temple, which represented the presence of God dwelling among his people, or did they apostatize from the priesthood and the temple services and God himself and go their own way, and then judgment came in, right? They were brought out of the land, brought into captivity, and eventually the temple was destroyed. And that was during Jeremiah's time as a judgment, Um and they were in captivity in Babylon. But then after the Babylonian captivity, we have the minor prophets. And what's their focus? Rebuilding the temple. Everything sort centers on the dwelling of God among his people. So this is the vision of the Bible. Um, now when Christ came, now the reality came. Everything before was a picture, but Christ was the word that was made flesh and tabernacled among us. And he said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll rise it up. And they thought he was talking about Herod's temple, but he was talking about the temple of his body, right? And then we know in John 14, he spoke of uh, the dwelling place of God. In my father's house, there's many abodes or dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Um, and if I go, I will come and receive you uh, where I am, that where you are, I'm sorry, that where I am, you may also be. And as you read John 14, you see he's not talking about the rapture. He's talking about the vi vision of the building of God with himself being the tabernacle of God who dwells in the Father and the Father dwells him, in him. And the disciples said, we don't know where you're going. We don't know the way. And he said, don't you know that I dwell in the Father and the, and the Father dwells in me? And I'm going a place where you can't go through death and resurrection to prepare a place for you. Where? In this dwelling of God and man. And if I go, I'll come again and receive you to myself. And it's revealed in John 14 that he's talking about the sending of the Spirit. Uh, and when the Spirit comes, he said, in that day, the day that the Spirit comes, you will know that I am in my Father and my Father is in me and I in you, and you in me. So we are brought in to this abode, this dwelling. And that word abode is not mansions. It's the same word as abide in John 15. Abide in me, and I in you. Um, so we need to understand, this is why I say this is spiritual. This is the vision of God's building. This is the vision of the apostles. This is the vision of Christ. This is the vision of Moses. This is the vision of Abraham, of David, right? This is what he's after is God's building. And the story of the Bible is a, is a building story. From Genesis, where we see the proto-type uh, of the New Jerusalem with the gold, physical gold, onyx, precious stones, bdellium, a type of pearl, the river with four heads as a type of the uh, river, the water of life. The tree of life was there and man created in the image of God, but he's not complete. He needs a helpmate. And what does that help me? It's a bride out of his side. Eve, right? What is that? This is a, that is a picture. All those elements are brought together 
in the New Jerusalem revealed at the end of the Bible, which is said to be the bride of the Lamb. And we know Adam was a type of Christ. Eve was a type of the church. And together, Christ and the church make up the habitation of God. Christ is the cornerstone, and we are the many living stones who are to be transformed and built up with Christ in us and built up in Christ. And we're going to talk about the building work of God when we come to Ephesians 4. Especially, we see that ministry is a building work. Uh, he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers for the equipping of the saints unto the work of the ministry. There's only one ministry. And what is it? It's unto the building up of the body of Christ. And we, we see a lot about building in Ephesians. Um, and, you know, again, when you talk about rewards, when you talk about sanctification, when you talk about anything related to growth in the Christian life and service in the Christian life, if you are not talking about building, you are talking about your vein jangling. Seriously. You know, fruit bearing is not just being a nicer person. It's building Christ into the saints through a ministry called the ministry, the New Testament ministry of the Spirit, which gives life. And we need to handle Christ, right? And we're to build with gold and silver and precious stones. And we need to have a consciousness that we are building the New Jerusalem, which is God's ultimate habitation, his dwelling place. When we... We need to have a bigger view of ministry. We're not just talking about the Bible. See, not everything builds. Uh, we can tear down the building. We can damage the building. In fact, when you see suffering loss, when it comes to rewards in 1 Corinthians 3, he talks about what is the kind of material you're using, wood, hand, uh, stubble, or gold, silver, and precious stones. And the work is going to be tested as to what kind of material you're using, the day is going to declare it because it's all going to be tried by fire. And only that which remains, which is part of the building, uh, will be glory and a reward. And anything that burns off is, you know, it's, it's considered to be loss. Um, what remains is the new Jerusalem, which comes out of heaven from God and is the bride of the Lamb and is made up with God as the content who is, he's the, uh, there's the throne of God and of the Lamb in the center of the city, and out of the throne proceeds the water, river of the water of life, clear as crystal, and that water is the Spirit, so there's the triune God, and there's the tree of life, which is Christ himself as the nourishment, and it all flows along a golden street, which is the fellowship of the divine life in the divine nature, and then the wall is made up of transformed, built up, living, precious stones, which are the saints. We see that it's consistent all the way through John and Peter and Paul. Uh, Peter talked about how we are living stones built up together to be a habitation of our, our priesthood, holy priesthood. Um, and Paul talks about how we are the habitation of God in spirit and we are the temple of God. In, we'll see that in Ephesians. And our ministry is a building work, which is building Christ into man by supplying him or pointing to him as living water and nourishment, and which is grace. And we do it in the fellowship, which is the street, the way, the water, and the tree, uh, nourishment of the tree of life flows to people it flows through fellowship which comes out as teaching and prophesying and preaching and edification so that we are all speaking to one another in love and in growing into him in all things and being built up in him in love and Christ is being built into us this is what ministry is and this is what Ephesians is about and I said it's our Bethel because it's designed to give us comfort. You know, the vision of Bethel for Jacob comforted him and strengthened him so that even though he went through Laban's 
maze of complications and all the messiness in his own life. I guess he was there for 21 years. Came out with four wives and 12 kids and all that. That vision sustained him and he was not purposeless. And he didn't, he knew what he was doing here on this earth. You can be a, a Christian and still be in vain traditions, vain jangling, vanity, and purposelessness if you don't have a vision of what we're here for and what we're doing. What motivates us? You know, what moves us? What excites us? What interests us? Well, the vision of God and what's in his heart is his building. And that's what moved the people in the Old Testament. That's what moved the apostles. And that should move us. And when you realize this is a building work that God is doing, and it's a hidden thing full of spiritual reality, it is not an activity outwardly. It has nothing to do with this world. You know, when uh, Abraham dwelt in, he could have been uh, a prince in Nimrod's kingdom. Uh, but he chose to dwell in tents with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which signified that they are pilgrims, strangers and pilgrims, and that their dwelling place is not here. They look to a city whose builder and maker is God, right? So it all comes together, you know, when, it, when you talk about sanctification, unto what? What is separation for? Is it just being a holy kind of person? No, it's, it's related to this building work of God. Um, let me come back to this. My wife's talking on the phone and I can't hear myself think. <laughs>